Okay, we're back from where? We're not back from anywhere. Okay, we have our second turkey ready to go here. This one we're gonna put on the rotisserie for the gas grill. So, a little bit different setup. The technique, the, you know, the recipe, the prep is all the same, but it's a little bit different setup than what we did with the one for the keg. So, here we go. I'm going to tuck the legs back into the uh, piece of skin here to retain the legs. Then we have to get the wings tied in place. Now this is going to be a bit of a mess because I have butter all over the bird. If you're doing this with any frequency, at least trust the wings before you get uh, everything covered in, in goo. You'll stay a little bit cleaner doing it. So something to think about there. All right, here goes. Get a good measure of butcher string. You want to unspool your string when your hands are still reasonably clean so you can actually reuse the string later on. Uh, not the not this part of the string, but this part of the string. We good? We're good, okay. Moving on, I'm gonna come through the point of the wing back under turkey. Okay, let's briefly go through what we have to work with on the rotisserie. So there's the spit rod, that's the, the body of the rotisserie, forks, we have two of these. Some models have four forks, so you can set up multiple items on the rotisserie. Nice wide thumb screws to work with, so you don't have to, to mess around with a pair of pliers trying to tighten them or loosen them, which is a common problem. This collar, this is going to be very important later once we put the rotisserie on the grill. Uh, final things, we have the threaded collar. This is just a, a stop, basically, that secures the counterweight and the handle on the end here. Moving parts on the handle. Is all, this is all threaded, so we have the counterweight, that can be moved, can be adjusted, and then the handle is tightened down. So this will make much more sense on the grill. So let's get the turkey set up on the rotisserie, then we can go to the grill. Now I have this fork secured on the rotisserie, I'm going to feed the spit rod through the cavity of the turkey, and in the process I'll end up retaining the drumsticks in place. So this can be a little bit delicate depending on if you have, um, say you have a chicken with a, a lemon or something inside of it, you have to work your way through the lemon. So it can take a bit of work. So you can see the forks on the rotisserie are actually retaining the legs in place. That's important because you don't want the leg to pop uh, out and say jam on the inside of the casting of the barbecue. That means the rotisserie will stop rolling smoothly. That affects your cooking performance. You want everything to turn consistently, so setting up the bird appropriately is a big part of it and the counterbalance does make a difference as well. So, I have the second fork. Make sure the thumb screw's backed off. This isn't too glamorous, you just have to pierce the bird with this thing and we're away to the races. Tighten that down. There we go. Looks like we're in decent shape here. So, we keep using the drip pan at this point. It's gonna keep everything nice and clean and now we'll go to the grill. Here we are. Okay, we're outside, we have our turkey on the spit, we're ready to go, the grill is preheated to just above 400 degrees. Once the turkey goes on, that'll drop to about 375 or so, and we can stabilize it there. One thing I've done is set up my drip pan already, that's gonna keep my barbecue nice and clean while it's cooking. I will add liquid there, uh, apple juice, water, cranberry, wine, whatever you like to flavor the, the turkey. And I have our Broil King smoker box with apple wood chips. Those wood chips I soak for about half an hour and you can see there's just a hint of smoke coming out of there. The other thing that's neat about this, and I'm not gonna touch it because it's gonna be really hot, but that tab actually slides back and forth so you get a shutter effect happening. You can control how much smoke you're getting in your food. To get the rotisserie onto the grill, simple as it sounds, pick the bird up and get it right in there. Now, this collar becomes very important. What it does is it actually holds the rotisserie engaged in the rotisserie motor. So I'm going to set it there, grab my handy screwdriver, and tighten this set screw down. Just holds it in place. You're gonna get a consistent cooking performance that way. So, we're set, that's pretty solid, and we're good to go. The next piece is the counterbalance. So, take the turkey out of the rotisserie, Take the spit out of the rotisserie motor, and we set this so it hangs free. Give that bird a spin on the rotisserie. Now, it's very heavy on the bottom of the bird, so what I'm gonna do is set the counterweight opposite to that heavy side, as far out as it'll go, 
and tighten that down. So that just, it smooths out some of the, the rotisserie action. You get a better cooking result. And now all we have to do is re-engage the motor. Make sure that collar remains in place. Have our rear rotisserie burner on. We have some smoke happening on our smoker box. Our rotisserie's on, it's rolling nicely. We can make sure our temperature is normalized. Check on it a couple of times and we'll come back. Off to a good start.